In this series of lecture videos, we're going to be talking about observational methods. This is a type of non-experimental method, and in this one, we're going to be examining behavior as it happens in the real world. So with this kind of technique, there's no control over what happens to participants, at least not with the kind of in-depth control you get with an actual experiment. And there's also no random selection or random assignment. You typically examine people as they arrive in a natural environment, and of course there are no experimental groups, so you don't randomly assign them to anything. So these kind of methods lack the experimental control and random assignment needed to infer causation. So they can't replace experiments in figuring out what causes behavior, but they can get at real world behaviors to figure out what people actually do. Sometimes this is referred to as ex post facto research or after the fact research because you're usually not trying to predict what people are about to do, but rather you're looking at what they are actually doing and then maybe trying to explain it after the fact. So typically these types of methods are better for building new theories rather than for testing existing theories and hypotheses. Now the two main approaches that you can take to this type of research and really any type of research is either a qualitative approach in which you're describing the way people act just using plain words. And this often accompanies things like interviews, open-ended surveys where they just ask people to perhaps describe their behavior, cognitions, or emotions, or writing about events after they occur. And this is different from the quantitative approach in which you're quantifying behaviors using numbers, and this usually necessitates coding observations. So you can't just simply write about behaviors, but you have to come up with some coding scheme that turns behaviors or emotions or cognitions into something measurable, something using numbers. Now, throughout most of this class, we're going to be taking the quantitative approach because as we'll get into, that has a lot of benefits, such as being able to test hypotheses. But we're going to spend a little bit of time now talking about the qualitative approach as well. One example of the quantitative approach is from research that looks at aggression in psychiatric hospitals. So one such study involved researchers looking at various personality factors and measuring them in a numerical way and then seeing which of these was related with aggression. And what they found was that, and probably not too surprisingly, patients who were more angry on a daily basis were more likely to be aggressive. And also patients who were more impulsive, who had a hard time just controlling any kind of behavior or emotion in general. They often act without thinking. And also those with more delusions of persecution or fears of paranoia that people were out to get them. And so this, like a lot of research, offered a way to test a hypothesis that in fact there are personality variables that are reliably related to aggression in psychiatric settings. And it also offered hospitals a way to screen for potentially aggressive patients in the future. So if you got a patient that was very angry, impulsive, and had delusions of persecution, that would be one to watch out for in terms of aggression. So this type of research I like to think of as research with order. There are ways of coding behaviors and personality variables into things that are numerical. So it's a way to really gather data on the world. And usually this is concerned with things like statistical significance. So if you quantified behavior, perhaps between two groups, such as those with a high propensity toward angers and those without, then you could do things like tell if there's a difference, a significant difference between those two groups. Or if you've quantified some personality variables such as impulsivity and also quantified aggression, you can see if there's a relationship between those two variables. And so a lot of times these types of studies will look at statistical significance, which we'll talk about a lot more when it comes to hypothesis testing. And the way I like to think about significance is just that it means it's something that's real and meaningful, that there are real meaningful group differences, real meaningful effects or relationships between variables. Some other things these types of studies are often concerned with is reliability, such as our measurement tools recording the same thing in a reliable way. So if you measure aggression one day and measure it again a week later, you should have relatively the same readings for the same people. And also validity. Are the measurements actually measuring what we think they are? So for measuring aggression, are we actually getting at the variable of aggression, like how likely someone would be to get into a fight? And again, reliability and validity are things we'll get back to in future lectures. But all these things require you to quantify your variables so that you can run statistics on them to see if they're significant, reliable, or valid. Now let's compare that to a qualitative approach. Researchers have also looked at aggression in psychiatric hospitals using more qualitative methods such as interviews. In one such study, they just simply asked nurses about their experiences with aggression on the job. And what they found kind of surprised them. 
they found that the nurses generally weren't all that concerned with the patient's aggression. In fact, they said usually they could handle patients just by talking things out. What they were more concerned with was aggression from coworkers, especially other nurses. And often they had to deal with conflicts, people spreading rumors about them, and this caused a lot more stress than having to deal with the patients oftentimes. So what's cool about a qualitative approach is sometimes it helps you to formulate all new theories. So for example, in this case, the researchers weren't even looking, typically, at aggression between coworkers in psychiatric institutions. But by simply asking people what their experiences were, they discovered this whole new area of research and were able to formulate new theories out of it. So one of the benefits of qualitative research is you get to sort of make it up as you go along. And also as you find new things that you become interested in, you can suddenly change course and start studying that. Often when you're describing behavior, people, and environments just using words, you can do so holistically or as a whole. You don't have to zero in on one single component such as patients, but you can look at the whole environment. And often you can also find more complex interactions. They found in this study also that nurses in particular departments were those who were most likely to be aggressive towards coworkers. So especially it seemed like high stress environments caused coworkers to kind of turn against each other. And that's the kind of complex interaction that scientists might not know to look for unless they start asking people. Also, you don't have to come up with any a priori or beforehand hypotheses or coding systems. You can simply go in kind of blind, not really knowing what to expect, and just record things as you see it. So it's great for discovering things that you never expected in the first place. One disadvantage of this, however, is that this approach leaves more room for subjectivity. Two people can look at the same situation and come away with very different reactions or different interpretations. And so it's just more subjective than trying to quantify things in hard numbers. So some things that qualitative research is concerned with is dependability, which is a lot like reliability. Basically, this means that if someone else was there making the observations, would they make the same ones as the researchers? So again, this is kind of getting around the issue of subjectivity. Also, qualitative researchers are interested in confirmability or credibility, meaning are they accurately describing the behaviors, people, and situations that they're observing? This is akin to validity when it comes to quantitative research. Confirmability and credibility can be hard to establish, but you can look at an author's past work. Do they have a good history of accurately recording things? And also you can compare their observations with those of other researchers or just use multiple researchers when you're collecting data to make sure that everybody's on the same page. That's a good way of lessening subjectivity. Another thing to be concerned with is transferability, or the word I like to use more often, generalizability. Meaning, do these observations generalize or apply to situations outside of that specific study? So if you observe some people in an interaction at a hospital, does that generalize or apply to lots of other interactions at lots of other hospitals? Is it a typical interaction that could be interesting and glean a lot of important information from? Or is it so specific to just that situation and just those people that it really doesn't apply to much beyond that? Now, with all of these, it's more difficult to prove the trustworthiness of findings, its dependability, credibility, generalizability, without hard numbers to back it up. You can't do things like significance testing or test for reliability or validity, so a lot of it kind of comes off at face value. Does it seem dependable and credible and generalizable? And oftentimes, that requires people to really get into the details and figure out, is this good information, is it reliable, and can it be applied outside of this individual research study? So just to review, there's these two approaches that really you can take to all types of research, but often qualitative methods come up more in observational research than others. And the biggest difference is that qualitative research is flexible. You can describe things in great detail. Whereas if you're trying to quantify things, you have to come up with some predetermined way to record behavior using numbers. So you can't just change your whole research paradigm in the middle of a study and start studying something different because it requires a lot of work to come up with those coding schemes. Also a big difference with qualitative research, you can't use statistics. And that's a real shortcoming because statistics can do all sorts of great things for us. They can provide evidence that there are significant differences or relationships between variables, and they can be used to statistically provide evidence for validity, reliability, and all sorts of other things. What's more, qualitative research tends to work outside of a theoretical context. Oftentimes you're observing things that maybe researchers have never really taken a close look at before, and so it can be good for building new theories. Whereas quantitative research, in order to do things like quantify behaviors, you need to have some basis at which to do that. So usually that's informed by previous research, past theories. 
So because of this, qualitative research is great for building up new theories. If you're studying something that really hasn't been studied a lot before, a qualitative approach is often the best one. But once you have an idea of how things work and you really want to test out those ideas, then typically you need to use quantitative methods so that you can use statistics to actually prove your case.